What up guys? It's Crystal Bottle Cap Barbecue. Well, once again, I was brought into a cooking challenge. This time, meatloaf. Let's get going. Well, meatloaf is one of those things that there is no one recipe. If you talk to anybody, look at any book, or browse the internet, you will find hundreds, if not more, recipes for meatloaf. Everybody has their own way of doing it. Everyone was taught a different way. There are regional differences. There's just tons of meatloaf recipes out there. And mine is no different. I found a recipe, I tweaked it a little bit, added some things that I just found in the refrigerator, which it's kind of like casserole in that way. Whatever you find, just throw it in. Well, mine's like that, so I'm gonna show you what my recipe is. We're gonna take it out on a smoker. You know you gotta smoke it. Now, I gotta thank Steve over at Mr. Big Kid for challenging me in this video. So please go check him out. I'll have a link up to his channel up above as well as down in the description. So his channel, Mr. Big Kid, is kind of a mix of a few different things. Obviously he does cooking and barbecue, but also I know he's done some hot sauces. He is another Arizona boy just like me. We haven't really met in person yet to do any collaborations or just hang out, but we've been talking. A uh, great guy. He also does a lot of gun videos, does a lot of reviews, goes out in the shooting range, just has some general fun. So great guy, great channel, great family. So please go check out Steve. All right guys, I'm gonna show you what ingredients we're working with and we're gonna get started on this smoked meatloaf. So here's the ingredients we're working with today. Don't worry, I'm gonna have the full description of everything down below, but let's just run through what I got. So it's kind of just general stuff. Uh, I did throw in some things that I like. So for, for the meat, I actually found two pounds of a mix of beef and pork. I was actually really excited. You don't really find this very often. So um, if you can't find this, just use a, um, some beef or whatever you want to use. Got some brown sugar, bacon jam. Oh yeah. Got some simple seasonings. Uh, so all you have in here is just salt, pepper, and some garlic. Ritz crackers crushed up and get that buttery flakiness of it. Some mushrooms, peppers, egg, apricot reserves, onion, ketchup, Worcestershire, and milk. So these are all the ingredients we're using for the entire recipe, both for the meat and for the sauce. I'll get everything prepared and we'll get it all pulled together. All right, now for the fun part, mixing everything together and getting your hands all dirty. So I don't like putting the meat in here and then adding all the ingredients. That kind of overworks the meat. So I'm gonna combine all the ingredients first, then add in the meat. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some mushrooms in there for a nice earthy flavor. Our peppers, red and green. Got some diced onion. I'm using white, but you can use whatever one you want. Got one cup of our crushed Ritz crackers. Then we got our seasonings. Again, salt, pepper, garlic, basic. Okay, we are gonna add one cup of milk. One egg, slightly beaten. We're gonna add a quarter cup of this bacon jam. I'm telling you, this stuff is my jam. Ah, get it? And half cup of ketchup. Okay, it's all mixed together. Okay, now add in our meat two pounds of beef and pork. And mix. Now you don't wanna to spend too much time mixing this because as you're doing this, it's just like when you're doing hamburgers. If you mix it too much, the, the meat just kind of solidifies and gets tough. So, I mean, if you want good slices on your meatloaf, if that's what you're going for, then go ahead and overwork it a little bit. But in any case, I don't like, doing it too much. All right, at this point, you just need to make a judgment call on if it's too wet, too dry. You can add either add in more milk, maybe a little bit of Worcestershire sauce if it's too dry, or if it's too wet, add some more uh, breadcrumbs, or in my case, Ritz crackers. But what you're looking for is if you can form a, kind of a, as much of a tight ball as you can, and then Kind of flatten your hand and wiggle it. If it holds its shape decently, then you know it's good. So this is good. 
All right, so at this point, we're gonna put this in the fridge, let the flavors meld together for about an hour or so. During that time, I'm gonna get my Green Mountain up to temp. I'm gonna be going at about 350 today. So while this is chilling, I'm gonna get the pit temperature up, and we'll get these things formed and onto the pit. All right, this has been sitting for about an hour. Our pit temperature is up. I said 300 earlier, I meant 250. So the pit's up at 250. Now we're gonna get our meatloafs formed. So instead of doing one big meatloaf, what I'm actually doing is splitting this recipe into individual portion sizes. So I divide it in half, then I divide it in half again. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a quarter of this and kind of forming a small mound, like a little, just a regular meatloaf, just smaller portions. Just like that, see how it forms pretty evenly. So now just kind of form it. So not only is this gonna speed up the cooking time, but also this is just better for, for small parties. I mean, if you're having just a close family over, you don't have to have a one big meatloaf that gets parted up. Just give everybody their own, own individual one. And even, the, even this is a large portion for one person, but still. It's just, I, I like the presentation better of just doing individual portions. And you see that I'm doing this on one of these silicone mats. Uh, I just think this makes it easier in the cooking process. It, get, it gets it off easier. Don't have to worry about it sticking to the to the grate. Um, and also this allows the fat to drip drip off. All right, now for one final step. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Luton Booty everything rub. I'm gonna do a, just a nice little coat on the outside. A little extra barbecue flavor. It'll also help create a little bark or a crust on the outside. Not gonna worry about the sides too much. At the top, it's gonna be just enough flavor. All right, pits up the temp. These are ready to go. Let's get cooking. All right. So I am using the top rack on here. And you can see I do have a tray on the bottom rack just to catch drippings, helps keep the grill a little bit clean. You can use a temperature probe. Just put in one of these so you can monitor. You could put on all four of them if you want, but one's good for now. I'm estimating about an hour just because of the size of these. So I'll be checking and I'll let you guys know what time it's gonna take. I'm guessing about an hour. While the meat is cooking, we gotta make up our sauce. And it's confession time. So as I was getting all the ingredients pulled together for this, I realized I was out of ketchup. So I'm not gonna do the sauce I originally planned, but you gotta go with the flow sometimes. So I'm actually gonna be using this new product I found. It's Heinz um, Hawaii Sweet and Smoky Barbecue Sauce. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna do a cup of that. You can use a cup of whatever barbecue sauce you have. And I'm gonna use a quarter cup of apricot preserves. It's gonna bump up the sweetness and also it's gonna give a little bit of a southern twang to it. Basically just twist that together. So I will go ahead and put in the recipe for the sauce I normally use down below. But this uh, Hawaiian sweet is what I'm gonna be using on these. So it's gonna be a nice little sweet twist to what I'd normally make. All right, so that's it. So I'm gonna let this sit out um, so it's not ice cold when it gets uh, brushed onto the meatloaf. But so what we're gonna be waiting for is waiting for the meatloaf to hit about 130. And then I'm gonna brush on this the sauce. Then we're gonna take the meatloaf up to about 160, final temp. So we'll go back out to the pit when the meatloaf hits about 130. You can see what they look like when we sauce them up. And then I'll let you know what, how much time it takes to get to the final 160. All right, guys, I have quickly lost my light, so I'm trying to hurry this up. Um, it's been about an hour and 20 minutes. These things just hit 130. And I want you to look at the color in these things. Man, that just looks awesome. That loot and booty everything rub really does a great job of getting a nice red color on these. Uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to glaze these with the sauce we made. 
basically just just brush it on just like you would anything else and then let that set for about 20 more minutes and then we're going to pull these things off Okay, these things just came in from outside. Man, these things look gorgeous. Just look at the color on that. They look juicy, they're glistening. I can't wait to cut into these. All right, so time-wise, it was about just about two hours. Obviously longer than what I thought it was gonna be. Um, but these things look phenomenal. It's The time is well worth it. And if I, if I bumped up the temperature to about 300, or 350 like you would cook these in your oven obviously you'd be done faster but i wanted to keep it at 250 to get a nice smoke flavor in there and i think it's going to pay off so we're going to let these things cool down then we'll do a taste test okay i've let these go for long enough i need a taste so let's get in here right down the middle nice firm texture Look at that, how juicy that is. Look at those juices. You can see a smoke ring on there. You can see some pepper, some onion. Look at this one. Yeah, look at all that. <laughs> all right, and the, the sauce set really well. All right, so I gotta get a taste of this. So if we are doing sandwiches or little sliders, look at that, cuts perfect for a slider. Perfect. All right, let's do a taste test. Oh, actually, let me give you guys a better look. Look at all those flavors in there. See the pepper, onions. Nice smoke ring. Texture on the outside looks perfect. Holding up to the fork really well. All right, here we go. Mm. If you loved meatloaf when you were a kid, I think you know what I'm talking about. There is that just taste that takes you right back to your kitchen when you're a kid. It's just that flavor is there, but then you stepped it up a little bit. The moisture is there. It has a nice bite still, holds together really well. The barbecue sauce is sweet, it's there, but it's not overpowering. It works really well with the savory beef and pork. I could just eat this all day long. It's freaking phenomenal and nice smoke ring. That's why I wanted to keep it at that 250. It was just the, it is the slowly cook it, just like any other good smoked barbecue. That nice ring around the edge. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I can't say a single bad thing about this. This is a phenomenal. I, I'm really extremely happy with this. So hope you guys liked it. Give this a try. Steve, thank you very much for challenging me. But now it's my turn. So I've been looking at my different friends' pages, see what videos they've done, see if they ever done a meatloaf. And this guy didn't see a meatloaf, but I know he could do a killer one. So Kent over at Daddy Dutch Barbecue, I'm calling you out, sir. I challenge you to a meatloaf. Do it however you want, crock pot, oven, smoker, blackstone, whatever, dude. Just come up with a good recipe and let us know how you do. Again, Steve, thank you very much for including me on this. Guys, please go check out Mr. Big Kid. Again, his channel is down in the description below and up in the iCard. Guys, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe as always. But no matter what, guys, just keep on grilling.